Who wants to learn QuickBooks? I don't hear you. A little louder. Want to learn QuickBooks? Watch these videos. And welcome back you guys. I'm glad you found video number two for a QuickBooks tutorial using QuickBooks 2014. And yes, we are the hot doggers. Once again, this is a made up name. I'm not really a hot dogger. I just like to hot dog a little bit here and there. Don't we all? Sometimes, not everybody, not the Dalai Lama. He's not a hot dogger. Maybe he is by not being one, who knows? So moving on, we're going to focus on accounts payable in this video. Accounts payable means money leaving the company, which is expenses. Oy vey, we nobody likes that. I understand. However, if you want to last in business, yeah, you do have to pay your bills. You're not going to last too long. And of course, if you pay your bills on time, you earn better credit, etc., etc. So let's learn how to manage our bills. Vendor Center. It's one place you can come to. If you're really bored, you can start adding all your vendors. However, I don't really recommend it uh, unless you really have that time. I just do it on the fly. What does that mean? I'm going to go to vendors. The other, other couple uh, things to look at is enter bills and pay bills. I'm going to enter the bill. And over here is where I can start setting up my vendors. A little drop down menu, nothing there. So, for example, my first bill is for a telephone company. Telephone company. I'm going to click the tab button. Okay. You could do a quick add or you could do a setup. Let's do one setup. One setup over here. Make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Oh, it doesn't go bigger. So, company name. I can copy and paste this. Is there a first and last name? If there isn't, no problem. You can put as many or as little details as you want. Really, it does not matter. It's really up to you on what makes sense. If you're going to show these invoices, you may want to do it fully. But for the telephone company, I do not really put the full address because I pay them online nowadays. So for me, it's irrelevant and it'll maybe a little bit of a time waster. So doesn't mean because all these options are here you have to do every single thing make do what makes sense for you and for your business okay okay now one thing to look at over here is tax settings okay if you're gonna pay an independent contractor uh, you have to put the tax ID number and check this off telephone company is not one of them so I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna hit OK for now Obviously, I didn't do a whole lot to that. And so we have our date. I'm going to get into 2014 and let's do uh, January. We'll do everything in January for now at least. $150 for the phone. Now, over here, this is another thing that you can set up on the fly, which is what we mentioned in the first video. This is where you could put and add different types of expenses. So right now, you have telephone over here. You can leave it that way if you want and just put everything under telephone if it's operations are that simple for you. If you have a little bit more complex of a situation, you may want to have subcategories. So all these categories can have subcategories. I'll do one as an example so you can see what I mean. Yes, jelly bean. All right. Expense. I'm going to do office phone under telephone. Save and close. And just to take it to another, add new again. I'm going to write cell phone under telephone expense. And that way over here, you can have your 800 number. You can do as many as what, however you want to subcategorize it. Okay. And so this was my office phone. And that's pretty much it for now. Now there's two other tables at the end uh, if you basically want to track uh, certain expenses against a project this is where customer job would come in so for example you have two clients and you acquire different expenses for these two clients so this could be client number one this telephone bill was 75 percent so first of all I'm going to add this uh, customer one I'll explain billable in a second so we'll say that this was 75% bill, 
based on client one and 75% based on client two. Quick ad for now. Billable means that you acquire this expense on behalf of this client and he's responsible for this bill. So you're gonna put billable over here that is gonna basically say, okay, client number two, you now owe $75 because this was an expense that was brought on and it's carried over to you. So that's what these two features mean over here. Uh, it may sound a little confusing, but um, if you guys don't get it, just ask away and I'll try to figure out how to explain it in a different way. <laughs> Saving you. So that's one type of way of doing a bill. Of course, if there's a credit, it's the same thing. You just uh, change it from bill to credit. Back to over here, we're going to do another type. And uh, we're going to call it the widget company. I'm just going to do a quick add as well on this one. And I'm going to say this is $180,000 but it's not an expense, it's inventory. So I'm not gonna get too detailed on inventory right now, okay? However, uh, this is where you would put items, which is more inventory versus actual expenses. So under items over here, I would add a new. So let's say it could be a non-inventory, it could be inventory, we didn't activate inventory over here actually. So uh, for now, we're just gonna say it's a non-inventory part and or what I can do if you guys want I'm gonna cancel out of here I'm gonna go to edit I'm gonna go to preferences I'm gonna show you a little quick ninja move while we're at it and items in inventory company preferences check inventory and purchase orders are active you can check or uncheck whatever options you want I'm gonna hit OK And now if I go back to my vendor, enter bill. So I guess I got to do it all over because I changed the setup preferences, but that's okay. We want to get it right, right? So we're going to call this again. It was the widget company. See how it came up. And we said it was 180,000. And we're going to go to items. I'm going to add a new item. And you see inventory part. You see how I activated that? Aha, you like that little ninja trick, huh? There you go. That's ninja trick number one. So item name, we're going to call this widget number one. Same thing. You can do sub items if you want. Put in this kind of stuff if you want. I'm keeping this very simple right now for you guys, okay? Some of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory, but whole point is we're going to say you can have a cost to it. If there's a base cost, sometimes costs change, so you have to... Be careful with that. If there's no set cost for this, you leave it zero. But uh, we'll just say that this costs nine dollars. Okay, it's one of those solid things that costs nine dollars. Preferred vendor, right? Widget company. That's where you're buying it from. That's your preferred vendor. Income account. You could put it all under food sales or create a new one. So everything is the same. You can create new ones. You can use what's existing. You're not limited. Okay. And for now, I'm going to hit OK. And so what I'm saying over here is that I got to figure out how, how many units is uh, $9 for 180. Not really the greatest proportion, right? But we're going to say that it was uh, 15,000 units is actually 135,000. So just for uh, simplicity's sakes, I'm going to change this to 135,000. So here we go. We bought inventory. It does not get expensive, it becomes more of an asset. So it's very important, you know, what you do. Are you going to expense something or are you going to put it as an item? I'm going to hit save and new. And uh, that takes care of that. So I'm going to X out of over here. I'm going to go back to vendors. I want to show you this create purchase orders, which we didn't have. This is normally uh, maybe where you might go before you get a bill for your actual inventory. So what do I mean by that? widget company drop ship to if you want to do a drop ship let's say we're not drop we're shipping it to our uh, hot dog lane over here 
PO number 1001 item. We said widget one, same item. I'm gonna say another 1800 units. See how it already brought up the $9 because that's what we set that price, right? Cool stuff. Now I'm gonna hit save and close. So now we created a PO, a purchase order. So it's not a bill yet. So the next step is to receive the items and enter bills. So you created a purchase order, you sent it. Let's say this is something where you get terms. They send, you know, they ship you the items. Now you can receive items and enter bill. Or you can receive items on the own or you can just enter bills. Uh, either way, you can do one or the other. So we're going to receive the items. Widget company. Look, there's a little box over here that says open purchase order exists for this vendor. Do you want to receive against one or more of these orders? Yes, we do. This is the purchase order. Of course, I could say that I only got 900. I don't have to say that I got all 1800. We know they're going to send the rest on another shipment. So you could do that. Cost is the same. Save and close. And uh, you can even go to pay bills now. And there you have all the different bills that we set up and all uh, that you owe. So now that we're over here, okay, uh, let's say we want to pay the telephone company. So I'm going to just do the telephone right over here. If it had a discount, it would have shown it. If it had a credit, it would have shown it. We haven't done any of those, okay. Um, payment, we're going to say that we paid it on the 22nd. Check. It could be by check, it could be by credit card. So if it's credit card, remember that one that we set up? There it is. If it's not that one, then you can add new and you can add a new credit card. But we'll say that it was a check and is coming out of the MG checking account. And then you have two options. You can either do to be printed if you're gonna actually print the checks or if you're handwriting them, you can assign the check number, pay selected bills, over here, it was check number 1001. Hit OK. Pay more bills. As you can see, that is gone. Now I'll do another example. I'm going to click this one over here, except I don't want to pay them 135,000 in one shot. Right now, I just want to pay them 65,000. That's all I want to do. Uh, I can even check this one. And I only want to pay them 2000 from this one so I can determine what I want to pay them same thing there's no discounts or credits day check method we'll say that it was this pay selected aha one check for both bills because it's to the same company so check number 1500 or was it 1002 Hit OK. Pay more bills. There you have it. There's the balance of those two. So that's how you kind of work that. Another thing I'm going to show you over here is under Ender Bills. We're going to do a credit. We're going to do the telephone company. Actually, let's not do the telephone company. Let's do vendors. And let's do credit. Let's do the widget company. Credit amount. Well, let me figure this out. So I'm going to go over here to widget one. Quantity. I'm returning a thousand of these pieces. So I'm uh, getting a nine thousand dollar credit. I'm going to do save and close. Close this. And I'm going to go back to pay bills. And over here, I'm going to pick this invoice over here I only want to pay 50,000 however I also want to use my $9,000 credit that I have over here that it's not letting me set interesting here we go I guess it was based on the second one and so over here I could set my credits it's gonna give me a uh, I guess total credits available, I guess this has to be higher. In any case, I think you get the point over here is that you can basically set credits, apply them towards the proper payment that it was set against. And obviously these are made up amounts is why it's not balancing, but if it was not a made up amount, 
uh, then we'd be fine. So uh, just to kind of play around with it a little bit more, I'm going to enter bill. I'm going to go back to my credit. I'm just going to say 20 of them. Save and close. Hit yes. Well, change the amount over here to 180. Save and close. Okay. And there you have it. Now the credit is down to 180. I can set the full credit right here. No more credits left. And the rest is the same. Over here I used my credit card. This is the credit card I used. Pay selected bills. Yes. I could print pay, payment stub or done or pay more bills. I can pay the rest. One more shot on another date. Pay selected bills, pay more bills, <gasps> no more bills to pay. And that pretty much wraps up this video. Pretty much went into almost every section that is uh, needed right now under vendors. And that's what payables are. We just paid all our bills. Let's try to collect some money next, okay? So accounts receivable is going to be on the third video.